Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim Another philosophy that stems from liberalism is post-structuralism. In post-structuralism, individuals are perceived to be agents in the construction of their own multiple dynamic identities. This basically entails that a plethora of identities can be assumed and embraced in one given individual, and all of them can be justifiable. Address me as a white lesbian. Oh. I'm not black. A boy could be a girl, and a girl could be a boy. So if I want, I'm not black. So well. if you talk to me, you address to me as a white lesbian. Okay, white lesbian. Okay, now we can talk. Like liberalism, post-structuralism has also been accused of providing no answer, unable to make choices and judgments about what may be good or bad. Um, so basically, post-structuralism isn't able to say what is a good or bad identity. It's really important, brothers and sisters, that you understand this point. Why? Because we are living in a time where modern feminism or fifth wave feminism uh, and especially uh, the LGBTQ regime, uh, these ideologies have post-structuralism at their core. And we and our children, mainly, because it's, it's our children that are the biggest target uh, these days with regards to feminism and the LGBTQ regime, um, we're being forced to accept any identity that the status quo create for themselves. And we are told that we are backwards or bigoted or extreme if we don't accept them. Because LGBTQ normalization apparently is good for humanity. It's like the best thing that we all have to submit to. Um, and we all have to accept this, especially as Muslims. Um, because if we don't, this is harmful to mankind and humanity. Okay. However, if one knows the root of their fraudulent, incoherent belief system, then these statements can be completely rejected because the proponents of these philosophies acknowledge themselves that they can't answer questions about good and bad, right or wrong, through post-structuralism. For example, uh, there's a writer called Madeleine Fagan. Uh, she wrote a book uh, called Ethics and Politics After Post-Structuralism. And she highlights the incoherence and the inability of post-structuralism to actually talk about morality. So she says, post-structuralist contributions to ethics in global politics are frequently accused of providing no answer, of being murdered in a relativistic logic which renders them unable to make choices and judgments about what may be good or bad. If post-structuralism has anything to say about ethics, this is not, it is claimed, something which could be used in any practical way to provide answers to pressing ethical questions. Ironically, People who push uh, these philosophies down our throats every day, um, they scream to the world that they are the most tolerant and peace-loving, respectful people. Brothers and sisters, the reality is that colonialism and imperialism didn't die out with the demise of Christianity. Just as it was used to justify the European empire's divine, so-called divine right to subjugate the Native American the Australian Aboriginals, uh, the African continent at large, chattel slavery, etc. The so-called reason-based right of the Enlightenment philosophers were used or was used in a very similar way to continue the subjugation. In his book, Liberal Imperialism, uh, Mehta mentions that liberalism serve the imperatives of nationalism, secularism, uh, the defense of particular, class, of particular classes, sects, uh, political parties, and imperialism. So the liberal empire became the epitome of progress and is being pushed as the objective truth that the world must submit to. Spreading their new religion, ironically, by the sword, uh, or the bomb, or today, in today's world, by the drone, actually. Philosophical liberalism is essentialist, is dogmatic, especially in the face of Islam and the Muslim community, without any foundations of right or wrong to justify it, as we've seen. Why are we being obliged to accept identities or practices that are inherently harmful? 
This is liberal imperialism, brothers and sisters. We can call this a type of Western fundamentalism. In his book, Sacred Freedom, Western liberalist ideologies in the light of Islam, Hanif Oliver quotes Guardian journalist Madeleine Bunting, describing the outline of a form of Western fundamentalism. She says, it believes in historical progress and regards the West as its most advanced manifestation. And it insists that the only way for other countries to match its achievement is to adopt its political, economic, and cultural values. Western fundamentalism is tolerant towards other cultures only to the extent that they reflect its own values. Let me repeat that. It's important. It is tolerant towards other cultures only to the extent that they reflect its own values. Sound familiar, sir? At its worst, Western fundamentalism projects a sense of unquestioned superiority, second an, assert an, a second, an assertion of the universal applicability of its values, and third, a lack of will to understand what is profoundly different from itself. So that was uh, Madeleine Bunting, uh, a journalist who uh, writes for The Guardian. I don't, I don't know if she does anymore because this was years ago. Uh, a non-Muslim uh, lady. She spoke the truth. Oliver concludes that had the basis of Western fundamentalism been correct to begin with, its adherents could have justifiably believed in its superiority. If the term fundamentalism is used in the context of sticking closely to a set of fundamentals that can be proven to be correct, um, as is the case with Islam, if you were to research it and look at all of the evidences for why we are insistent on following the Quran and the Sunnah upon the understanding of the companions and those who followed them in good. Uh, in this case, it cannot be legitimately criticized. However, if the term fundamentalism is used in the context of, of adhering to a set of unsubstantiated fundamentals like philosophical liberalism, post-structuralism, feminism, especially fifth wave feminism, but all of the feminisms, uh, post-modernism, the list goes on, or falling prey to fanaticism and terrorism, then it deserves to be condemned. I'll just finish with a little example of Western fundamentalism. So a friend of my wife here in Saudi Arabia, she was walking in a mall with her children um, and she has about three or four girls and they were wearing, her girls were wearing hijab, a bayat and hijab. She was wearing niqab and a non-Muslim lady walked past, not knowing that the family were English and spoke English. She said, disgusting, all covered. Imagine you're in a mall in Saudi Arabia. You're here as an expat. It's not your country. It's not your culture. They're not your people. Yet you're still trying to impose your Eurocentric views upon others. This is extremism. This is Eurocentricity. And this is a superiority complex, which is not based upon anything firm. Because as we've said, philosophical liberalism has no place in talking about right or wrong, morality and ethics. We've heard it from the, the authors and the philosophers themselves. They acknowledge this. So we need to educate some of these philosophical liberalists regarding their own religion.